so much intelligent they used different devices to keep themselves healthy blowing of the conch what is that you are inhaling deeply and then you are exhaling deeply you are increasing your inspiratory reserve volume and you are increasing your expiratory reserve volume there is nothing religious into it what they did you know they did the sun salutation or if they don't have time to do sun salutation in the morning they used to blow this conch 5 7 10 times the bigger the more it increases it increases your inhalation capacity your exhalation capacity it helps in your abdominal muscles in fact blowing of the conch is better than the exercises which we have i have done and it is so simple you just have to know the technique and it also it goes in fact blowing of the conch goes up to your anal region when you do the poses when you will learn asanas at that time they always say that you should contract the anal area when you are doing for example if i am sitting like this you know my tummy has to be tucked inside and there should be a pull in the pelvic region the pelvic region should be pulled so these simple devices they used just imagine how much intelligent the vedic people were it is nothing religious you can blow anything you know if you suppose you don't want to do this suppose you don't want to blow the suppose you don't want to do the exercise you don't want to blow the conch for your own health see it as an exercise you don't have to see it in any other way a simple exercise if you don't want to do this also what you can do you know bring a packet of balloon and go on blowing it if you don't want to do the exercise if you don't want to do if you are so much lazy that you don't want to do the exercises the breathing exercises if you don't want to sit on a chair and breathe deeply bring a balloon blow some balloon that will also have the same effect in the earlier time some 30 40 years ago doctors they used to prescribe ayurvedic doctors still in the villages for some diseases of the respiratory tract a person having dyspnea and all those things they are prescribed it's a simple thing if you want to do the exercises do the exercise if you don't want to do these are the things as i told you you know all the exercises which i have done up till now the breathing exercises this is only you know a type these all methods and the method is for what you know human beings get bored very much if you just sit on the chair and you if you just sit on a chair and you know close your eyes and breathe deeply inhale deeply exhale deeply that will also do but as as i told you right from that era human beings they want every time new things and it becomes you know when i first saw this dog breathing i also laughed and while doing it was so entertaining so along with the exercises you know there is an entertainment you don't get bored if you do suppose you are doing the dog breathing the rabbit breathing you know the ultimate thing is what you have to breathe deeply okay you have to you know take the air to all the lobes up till the base of the lungs the air should go inside that is the logic behind now you put it at at was dog breathing rabbit breathing then they have the sashank asana the moon position breathing all these things are what just you don't get bored and you continue with the exercises so in the same way this is also a device this is also a method and of out of all the exercises this is the best method because in those exercises your breathing remains shallow 
But in this, if you do this thing, you know, seven times, eight times, ten times, how much time? In a minute you can do and you can fulfill the entire respiratory volume for the entire day. Just imagine the tidal air is only 500 and you know, the vital capacity, all the expiratory reserve volume, the respiratory reserve volume, the tidal air, it is 10 times more. So if you do this 10 times, that means what you have done the quota for your, you have done 10 times quota for your breathing. So all these are methods, you know, to keep people healthy and you know, the sound which is produced, this is a smaller one. I just got it. If it has got a bigger one, the sound is noise and it depends upon your strength, how much sound you can produce. And it is not like that you require strength to produce the sound, you know, there is a technique when you are blowing through it, you should make the lips, a small opening should be there, you know, like small children, they do, if you do this thing, then the sound comes out. So sound, I have taken the lecture of sound and it stops the thinking. Can you think and blow at the same time? Till the time you are blowing the conch or you are doing any activity, you cannot think. The ultimate of all the exercises is what? While doing it, there should be no thinking. You don't think. Again, I am telling you all the exercises which I have done. All these exercises, you know, if you do anyhow, the physical, the muscular, at the muscular level, you do mistakes, no problem at all. But Breathing, it should not stop. You should not have any thoughts. When you are doing the exercises, suppose you are raising your legs up and you are inhaling deeply. The moment you are not inhaling deeply, you know, you will get some thought that you have to cook for your child. You have to take him to the school. The last night was not good. He was having some problem, some distance passed. All these thoughts go on coming in your mind continuously. And these thoughts, as I told you in the lecture, these thoughts are the most, this, these are the, this is the way by which we lose our energy. I told you in the lecture. So all these exercises is for what? You increase your vital capacity, take more of oxygen inside and other thing is what? Bring the thoughts to stand still. No thought should be there. Every mechanism, every device, you know, whatever name they are giving, the purpose is only one thing, to stop the thoughts. So you will be wrong whenever you are doing some yogic breathing or yogic posture or yogic exercises, you will be wrong if you get thoughts. The purpose of yoga is what? To stop the thoughts. That is the ultimate, the day, I mean, you become enlightened, the day you completely stop the thoughts. The thoughts become in your control, the mind is in your control. If you want the, to think, then only you will think. If you don't want, it will not go inside. That is enlightenment, that is the superior most level. The purpose is this only. But common people like us, if they can be, you know, say, Scientists, they say we get 60,000 thoughts. I don't know how they have counted, but it is far more than that. Every second, you know, there is a wave of thought going in people. When you are listening to this lecture at that time also, if you observe, you might be getting something. So the purpose of yoga or the purpose of all exercises, you know, is what? To become thoughtless. So. That is all about, if you do these exercises which I have taught you, I mean, if you just want to do, if you do all the exercises which I have taught you, it just takes 15 to 20 minutes. And if you are not of the rigorous type, after this I will, uh, I will teach exercises for people, you know, who want dynamic, dynamism. They want to be active, those exercises, but they, that, the purpose of that is also the, also the same. The purpose is what? That you know, to reduce or to finish the thoughts. That is the purpose of every action you do. You know, uh, 
the vipassana method if you want if you want to go for the vipassana way of meditation you know they organize it for 10 days there you don't have to do anything you just don't have to talk there is no any specific exercise given there is nothing you just don't have to talk to anybody in the 10 days complete silence has to be maintained what exercise they are doing nothing they you just have to concentrate on your breathing how you are breathing when the air is going inside you see that when the air is coming outside then you see that simple way vipassana meditation you just have to observe your breath what type of exercise they are doing nothing what muscular activity is there nothing there are people who just sit in the caves in this lotus position or without lotus position they sit in one position and they have the most healthy body they sit at one place for so many days if you go in the belt of haridwar rishikesh still there are caves where people go i mean people who meditate they go over there and they sit and they just meditate what type of physical exercise are they doing nothing so the ultimate aim is what to breathe deeply and to remove the thoughts and for common people you know who don't have so much patience who want dynamism who want activity for them the technique is given these exercises are what just a technique so that you can breathe deeply along with that there are very rare people who can sit at one place without doing any movement going on doing meditation very very rare people are there i mean these are the these are the extraordinary people but common people like us they have to go for uh, i mean along with the exercises we do the breathing and now what has happened all of that you know the goal is lost the goal is of what to become thoughtless that goal is lost the means these are the means the yogic exercises the postures they are means only the means remains and we do the means we forget the goals people can do people can do you know strange strange exercises i mean they can twist and turn their body they can take their legs on their neck they can do anything but these people while doing this you know are they becoming thoughtless the purpose is to become thoughtless you are thoughtless in the process of you are thoughtless in the process of learning a new asana suppose you want to learn the sirsasana i mean standing the head stand if you want to learn the head stand you go on trying it for 6 months a year some people take 2 years some take people may take more years to perfect that art now till the time you are doing you know you keep on falling and you you are totally into it at that time there will be no thoughts the day you become the you master the technique when you can stand on the sirsasana the day you stand you can stand it easily i mean in any condition anywhere if somebody tells you you can just with a flick you can just stand upside down now standing upside down after standing after learning the sirsasana what will happen when you are standing then the thoughts will go on coming so the process is more important when you are learning you know there was no thoughts your total concentration you know everything was what in the process of learning they go on increasing you know only one there are 54 asanas in the hatha yoga and they say 84 some books they say there can be as much asanas as possible but that is not the point both the books say that you know if for example the hatha yoga in that they say siddha asana is the best asana you just sit like this okay so one asana is good why the purpose is what to remove to stop the thoughts of all the exercises which you are doing all the asanas you are doing you know so they go on making it difficult step by step you know from simple exercises from simple asanas you, you go on doing more complicated so this is happening because those scientists they knew after you master an asana it becomes a mechanical thing for you but the purpose is what you know to be thoughtless 
so every time a new asana is given so if you are going if you are going on learning the asanas and the thoughts are not in your control it is all useless i mean there is no value whatever you are able to do if you can just sit close your eyes and you know just reduce your thoughts or no thoughts for for half a minute or say 15 seconds also that is more than enough okay so i mean what i mean to say is don't take it as a you know muscular muscular thing you know that your abs will uh, become more become uh, good looking and your muscles you you will get the muscular uh, strength and no it all these things are not for that for that you can go to the gym if you are walking in a gym there also if you are walking you know more than lifting the weight and looking at your muscles look at your breathing how much deep can you breathe and how much deep can you exhale okay so the muscles is not important you know if you like my videos please subscribe share comment on my videos namaste